All right, let's switch this name. Rename Brigham. Okay, got that there. Good morning, guys. Gilbert and Anthony. I'm sending out this little text message as a reminder. It's top of the hour. What a wonderful day today. Fabulous Friday. We're talking about cracking the producer's code. How do we do that? How do we stop just being a participant and start being a producer? I think that's going to be a great topic for today. We have an awesome person on that's going to let us understand that a little bit more depth. So I'm going to pull this up here. Really? And Okay, reminder has been sent out. Fantastic. While we're waiting for her to hop on, I'm going to share my screen. And then first few minutes of this will be... All right, where did you go? Oh, myrenatus.com. One second, when I'm sharing my screen, I'm going to show all the stuff. There we go. If you, since becoming a part of the Renata... Okay. All right. Up against the wall. Almost going to go to this video library. Pull up this generally speaking video. I love Bob Snyder. He gives us so much value. I, I love these generally speaking videos. He's got so much, so much value that he creates. All right. This I'm sure will resonate with what it is we're talking about. It's called Act It Until You Become It. Okay. Let me make sure I'm sharing my screen so you can see it, not just me. And you can hear it as well. Here we go. Right there. I don't know if you guys can hear this and see this. Looks like we're we're in the right spot. There we go. Hey everybody, we're back in the in the truck today in the freedom wagon for another episode of uh, Generally Speaking. And I just 
you know, I, I have I have said in the past, you know, the old adage is like, man, sometimes you gotta you gotta fake it till you make it. You know, I was talking about about uh, you know acting things out in such a way that that you eventually become it. And then I heard a phrase that really transformed my mindset around that because I don't want individuals to fake it. That seems it just didn't seem right. But I do know that if you act for an extended period of time, you can generally become that which you have uh, spent your time doing. So the phrase is this, don't fake it till you make it, act it until you become it. That seems like such a simple change of words that shifts the entire meaning behind the reason why we do what we do. Act it till you become it. And Renatus, man, it's all about, it's all about the, the art and the process of becoming. And if you work on becoming a better you, if you work on becoming really the leader that others are looking for, you will find that you can attract that success into your life. If on the other hand, you continue to fake it and fake it and fake it, don't realize that you need to act it until you become it, then I'm not sure that you get the same result over time because you'll feel as though you're an imposter. And there's a lot of talk these days about imposter syndrome and about those folks who just do not feel worthy. They don't feel worthy of the title they've been given or the, or the success or recognition they've been given because I think in those case, they are faking it over time instead of acting it to become it. Just a little tip of the trade there. Keep yourself a gratitude journal. Make sure that you focus on the right kinds of things so that you can, again, enlarge what you focus on, which is the, aw the awesomeness of you as you become the person of your dreams. Act it until you become it. That's so good. Act it until you become it. Good morning, guys. We've got Nick on. We've got Jayla, Freddie, Anthony, Gilbert, Kayla, Tanya, and Joey. Wonderful. We're going to have a great time today. I'm going to pull up this uh, Facebook Live and get a couple reminders out to people. I, I think it's funny. When, when we go on Facebook Live, then people usually get their ears perked up. Like, oh, it's time to, time to hop on. And it's right. It is time to hop on. You know, in the group. We'll go to Team Elevate. And we're going to go live in five, four, three, two, and one. Hey, good morning, leaders. Uh, it is Fabulous Friday. I'm Brigham Black, and I'm going to be your master of energy this morning. Really excited to share how to crack the producer's code. Now, I really love this topic, and we have someone that, that understands how to produce, not just in real estate, but as a marketer, uh, Lily Stott is someone that understands the ins and outs of creating value and what what it takes to expand your skill set, your mindset, and your tool set. We're going to dive into a little bit of that today. And before we do, we have a few announcements. Wanted to make sure that all of you are are equipped with, with some of these announcements that would be helpful. Uh, as always, on Wednesdays, we have our, our Wednesday night property tours. They're going so well. Uh, I've been doing my best to start to cut those up and put them on YouTube so they can be another uh, another resource for you to, to go and share with other people. If you're like, man, that last property tour was awesome. I want to share that with somebody else. And they're not part of our group yet. You can go to the Elevate Facebook page, find the property tour of the date, send it to them. So that has been, been awesome. Good morning, Valerie. Thank you so much. Uh, Gilbert, on your YouTube. Yeah, on uh, Team Elevate is where I'm putting the house tours. A lot of these other morning conversations that I'm having with uh, with like leveling up podcasts, that's my own content. So you'd find it on uh, on my Facebook page. Yep. And that's at Stay B &B. <clears throat> So yeah, it's really great. We're having a lot of fun making this happen. And we're just trying to make it easier and easier for everyone to to connect to good resources. And those video assets are starting to to really pile up. Send link, please. Okay, so the link, do you want to know? I'll just put at stay BNB. That is how you find it on YouTube. If you type that in, you'll find it. And I think it's at elevate or team elevate. Oh, shoot. I have to. I'm pretty sure it's at team elevate. It might be at team U elevate USA. Double check that. One of those is the one on YouTube. Uh, but 
you'll find them that you'll, you'll recognize that most of those videos are, you know, with Michael Huggins on there, the ones that I do, I'm putting a, um, a picture in front or a cover photo. So you'll see which ones are the newest ones. And I've only, I've loaded two so far onto that page and there's like 700 plus videos. So it's good. It's a new, totally new thing for me to, to do that. And this month, uh, I put in a ton of energy and effort to make sure that that's getting out there. I think it's starting to pay off. I just, this morning, I got a text message from uh, coach Brian Fryer who helped me a lot with my social media and my outreaches. And he's like, dude, I got to get on your podcast. And I was like, yes, you do. Super stoked for that. So that's probably going to be coming up in the next month and it might be two months, but we're going to find him. And Rob Sperry also said uh, after nationals. So in April, about that time, we'll be able to get him on the call too. So just having a lot of fun and uh, even though um, the focus of that isn't always perfectly marketing, I think it's still very valuable and we're, we're having a great time doing it. So we've got in our chat. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. We started with this Zoom. <laughs> we've got a couple of those. Perfect. Now uh, we have our blueprint for wealth once a month. This is something that is happening that first Saturday of every month. And we're tagging on our super Saturday right after. Uh, last time we did it before, and I'm not sure if we're going to do it before again, but we'll have that event plugged in with it at the same time. Other thing, uh, we have, oh, I just spaced my, oh, I guess on Mondays we have our Founders Live and we have our our, our great events in the evening that we do with our masterminds. Uh, Monday evening, if you're local here in Utah, we have different people from the community that are are living, breathing their best real estate life, sharing some of their experience. And then we're masterminding around a topic every Monday at seven o'clock. So now what I love to do, one of the things that, that keeps me going with these calls is hearing one of your stories. And the reason we do this guys is so that you can get connected to each other so that we can become more familiar. Uh, I, I love this idea with, with how you learn a language is you just get used to it. You surround yourself with it. You use different parts to communicate. And eventually your ears get programmed and attuned to it. Your mouth gets attuned to you using it. It's like muscle memory. So as you share your story, you're creating muscle memory and you're helping others create muscle memory for what your story is. And uh, we've got Jayla. Oh, right. Our, Jayla, I don't think I've ever heard your story and today's the day. I would love to have you come off mute and share your story. Here's here's the way this goes. You will contextualize where you were before you came down to Renatus. What were some of those strategies that that seemed foreign, but once you started going through them, you know, it it opened up your eyes to some new things. And now, what have you done since you joined Renatus? I'd love to hear your story. Go ahead, Jayla. Hey guys. Um. So. I just graduated college about a year ago in uh, the creative fashion industry, I guess is what I, well, I is what I got my degree in, Excellent. but clearly, clearly I'm not using it. So okay. um, I, I was waitressing for a while after college. And then long story short, I was like, this isn't for me. Like I had a dream of doing interior design, something creative within the real estate um, market in general. And then I came across real estate investing, literally riding past my old job on a sign. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a sign. So I ended up, this um, is a sign. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I ended up calling the number and, um, I spoke with Michael and gamer and, um, I ended up getting the education because it just sounded, I knew it was good. You know, some people say it sounds too good to be true, but I'm like, sometimes you can discern what's really good and what's not. So um, I discerned that it was it was good. And I've been with you guys for about three months now. Um, well, since November, I'm not sure. I can't. It's still early for me. But um, so, yeah. And what it's done for me so far is I've built relationships, which is most important for me. And then um, I'm not I'm fresh out of college. So learning isn't like you know, something new. So that's, um, came easy for me. And I've learned a lot as far as all the different aspects of what the, I have the essentials package. So what the essentials package has, and then the people that I've connected to, they have, they've done, you know, have more than the essentials package. So I kind of get to learn from them until I get, you know, the next education, uh, 
thing up. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And I've been having fun going to the uh, Thursday meetings every week and um, meeting new people and learning new strategies and things of that nature. That is excellent. So what I'm hearing is this is starting to change your mindset, change your skill set, change your tool set. And the biggest value you've found so far is creating new, a new circle of friends. And right. Having similar language, having similar goals, and moving forward towards what you want to do. And I think that is so awesome. Congratulations yes. for being here last two and a half, three months. So yes. exciting. Now, guys, since she's brand new, here's what I'm going to have you guys do. Go to your name, put your phone number in there. So she has some resources, 238 0707. Okay. Here's my phone number. What I'm going to have you do after everybody gets their phone number behind their name, snap a screenshot, reach out to them, start to make more connections. Because the okay. thing about our community, if we don't know each other and we don't have each other's phone numbers, we don't know how to connect with each other. We can't really help each other very efficiently. It's not that we can't help each other. So we don't know efficiently. So Jayla, put your phone number at the very back as well. And then literally send a text to everybody that uh, is on the call and introduce yourself. Take we usually just introduce yourself, but take that little bit of a moment to uh to get to know some other people, right? Especially okay. those in your local market. I think that would be very, very helpful. That sound fair enough, Jayla? Yes. Thank y'all so much. You're so welcome. So I'll guys put down. Yeah, put your name and then your phone number right after it. And then also put what state you're in. But I put I'll I'll put Utah for mine. Although I'm okay. going to be moving to uh, uh, to Colorado. Sorry, they have the uh, the airplanes flying across today. Oh, you're good. Um, actually, I have one more question for you, Jayla. Okay. Tell me what was the one thing you've learned so far that like blew your mind? Like this was something that you're like, this is so cool. How did I not know about this? Tell me, tell me one thing. Okay, you said one thing. I'm learned. Sorry, I can't hear. You said one thing I've learned. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, educate from the education. Yeah, or, okay. or from another person in the in the community. That's fine too. Okay. Ooh, a lot. Um, I would say most importantly, velocity banking. Mm. That's that's one of the cool things. Um, I learned so far. I'm 23, so I obviously it's it's new for me. I'm not sure if it was, you know, I never heard of it before coming to Renata. So I'm like, okay, a uh, a quick way to pay off student loans for me. That's my mind. I'm like, all, all right. So yeah, yeah. So I I enjoy learning about that strategy. So I'm right. looking to implement it sooner than later. That's great. Do you have a line of credit that you can start implementing it with? Um, I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to figure out how to use it. I do have a line of credit, but I'm trying to figure out how to Okay, so you have applied. have like a credit card you could use? Yes. Okay, uh, uh, make it super simple. Do one balance transfer from your credit card to whatever your student loan debt is. You're like, hey, I'm just going to okay. try this with 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or however long, however much you have. Don't go over your 33% utilization. But if, if you've got like $200, make that principal payment and then put your whole paycheck, all your money that you've got, onto that credit card until the balance drops and then you can get it, get it back to zero and then you do that balance transfer again. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay. And just, even if it's only like an extra two or 300 bucks that you're putting towards principal, because you're using your whole income towards that line of credit, that accelerates it. Okay. 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 Thank watch you. that credit card portion of the class as well. That would be very, very beneficial for you, but it doesn't need to be difficult. It just do those little balance transfers. So call your bank right. like, Hey, how do I do a balance transfer for my credit card? to this and that'll work. Okay. Okay. Sounds All right. Good. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for, for sharing Jayla and no yeah, give me a text. And when you shoot people at text, here's something uh, about networking that I've been really doing my very best to implement guys. That I think is very he helpful when you are around somebody snap a picture with them or ask them to share a picture with you. So when you are meeting someone new, you have their picture uh, in the text thread. So Jayla, I'm going to give you that, that command, S snap a great okay. picture of yourself and share that with the people that are putting their phone numbers in the chat. Sound good? Awesome. Okay. Now I am going to, 
turn the time over to Lily Gisela Stott. So grateful to have her on today. We're going to talk about how to crack the producer's code. She's someone that really knows how to do that. And she she knows how to be a producer because she's been producing for not just one or two months or a couple years, but for years now. It's been multiple years. And she knows how to do this in, in such a great way. I'm grateful to have her on today. And let me pin her for just a moment to this so we can find. There we are. Lily. Good morning, Lily. How you doing, my friend? Good morning. Happy to have be with you guys every Friday. I'm happy to be here, excited to share with you whatever you want to ask me. I'm an open book. And uh, yeah, here I am. I love it. Okay, so today I would love you to talk a little bit about how to crack the producer's code. How do we become a producer in Renatus? How do we make the money? How do we do this? Because I know you've got a wealth of experience. And we want to know, oh, well. how, how do we do that? Well, that's a, that's a, a um, why a, a question, right? Yes. I mean, I'll just uh, take here and there what it takes to get to the point and start with, um, for me, start with, a, with, a, with one to do something different, right? want to break something i mean it's because in any in any journey that you um that you start you know or at least i mean you expect there's gonna be some challenges mm -hmm. and, and if you don't you're gonna, oh, I'm gonna do this and when the first challenge comes like ah it's not working ah you know so i had to prepare mentally by desiring what is that i want i usually challenge myself by the capacity, if I'm able or not, I turn it to myself. I, I can do this. I can do this. And when things are not going the way I want to say, well, no, you know, I can do this. I'm going to do this. So it's like I'm challenging myself all the time uh, when things are not going my way or the way that I want to. So that's one thing on Renata's. I, uh, to get what I, to, I mean, I think there's two things in Renata's for me to, that I wanted to accomplish. One is, uh, be the product of the product, you know, invest mm -hmm. in real estate, work and acquire a portfolio of properties, and also make sure that I can make money referring to education. So those are two, I think they're two different things, but they go hand to hand, right? Um, so um, I, when I started with Adams, um and see the, the, saw the vision, the opportunity to talk to other people, I would say that one of the the um, the successes, the the energy that I have with me about an uh, um something that I le I learned. I remember at that time was velocity banking. Oh my goodness, I couldn't stop talking about velocity velocity banking because I believed in that and I applied that, and I couldn't say how how other people are not applying this. So when I talk about the product, about what I learned. I had something called energy, enthusiasm. Mm. Because if you're trying just to talk to someone, it may sound like a sales speech if you don't have that energy. It's like, yeah, good. And so what? And when I was talking to them, I was not trying to sell anything. I just wanted to share what I was going through. I want to share, hey, guess what? I'm going doing this. And this was happening to me. And, and they're like, some people were like, okay. Other one, other people were, were telling me, tell me more. How's it going? So I said, well, one thing is uh, take your classes, apply it and get excited about it because it's fantastic. You know, velocity banking is great if you know how to do it. However, however, that energy may go, and I'm talking about my, uh, about my own experience, may go down when you experience challenges. That, that's why you have to renew it. Let me tell you an example. And then I'm going to use the credit, okay? I mean, some people understand the credit. When a person has is starting having a new credit and they have a, a card for $500 and they pay well for two months, now they have a score for $700. Wow, they have a high score just for making two payments. However, the credit challenge when you're going through time and you're going through uh, not only one car, you have several credit, ca credit cards, um, uh, cars. Now you have mortgages. Now, now you have to handle something with ups and downs. The same thing is with the energy and or with, with, when you're going through some, 
an experience. For instance, velocity banking. When I started, I couldn't stop my energy and my enthusiasm. But then I realized, when the more I took more and more classes, I realized velocity banking, you need to understand how to do it. Because in low scale, it's easy to do it. You know, a credit card, you pay, you want to pay like, I mean, $5,000 $5, are easy to move here money there. But when you're having businesses, you have um, uh, pr properties and you're like, wait, I have this mortgage, another mortgage I have. Abdul, should I mix everything? What should I do? And then it comes uh, confusion in your mind. And when it comes confusion, you cannot ex ex um, say the things with the same enthusiasm because you say, I don't want people to make a mistake like I perhaps I'm doing it. And I stop talking about velocity banking for a while. But then if that happened to you or any of you, that's the time you need to talk to the coaches, right? Because I was thinking, which, which property I paid off first? I mean, the, high, the one that has high balance, the one that has a uh, high monthly payment, my own property, what would it be, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, I thought would be the one that has low balance because I can pay it off easier. But I'm talking to another coach, that well, you have to focus on your uh, principal residence. I was like, okay, but I owe more in this one and numbers didn't work. So, well, but again, I overcome that and I'm working on my paying my own residence. That is almost, I, I have to say that I apply in this velocity banking. My balance is really, really low now compared to the amount that I bought my, my house. So, yeah, so that's what I've been using. If you ask me, what is the, the one of the tips of the success is using the enthusiasm when you are knowing about a topic. So this, this product is fantastic because you learn something and you're excited and you talk to others, right? I mean, I'm in it. Can I eliminate something that you just brought up that I think is absolutely essential here? Uh, when you are public speaking, when you're sharing this with other people, you don't need to know every single class. You don't need to have watched every single class to be able to share. You're talking about being enthusiastic and sharing what you know. Right. If if we don't take action on what we learn, we don't actually know it. We know of it, we've heard it, but until you use it and you do it, then you don't have that lived experience. Think about it this way. If if you are super excited about velocity banking, you've, you've made that balance transfer and you can actually see that your debt is getting reduced every single month, your enthusiasm goes up, your excitement goes up and your belief level goes up. And if that's even the, the only thing that you've applied in in uh, in Renatus, if you apply that to a mortgage, it is very unlikely that you won't like pay off twenty thousand dollars worth of interest. It's not it's not that it couldn't happen, but very highly unlikely that you won't have more value just by applying that one class. Exactly. And you think about uh, our experience versus somebody else's experience. It's secondhand versus firsthand. As soon as you take a class you think about it, you do something with it. As you're reviewing your results, you get excited, good or bad. You either learn from it or you uh, had an opportunity for growth. Like that's so awesome. And as we have those, then it starts to give us more momentum. So Lily, talk to us a little bit more about after you've had those experiences in real estate, those experiences applying the classes, how you kind of contain that enthusiasm and use it to your advantage. Uh, for me, it's continual learning because every time I knew I learn something new, I'm just so excited. For instance, the classes for uh, Gerard Gunderson, I have not applied them yet, quite honest, but I get excited. There is more. You see, I, I think like, wait a minute. I mean, how the rich got richer and I got, I, he explains everything about that. And I haven't applied all of them yet. I'm excited that it's more for me to do. So this education doesn't stop. You will continue learning and learning and learning and applying, right? So that's for me the enthusiasm continues the more I study a class, not applying it, because in the application, of course, you get more experience. And like, and, and some people say, well, I won't do, I won't say anything until I do my first, my first flip. No, because there's other classes that you don't like. I said, velocity banking, right? And you can start applying that. It's easy to apply, uh, but I need learning something, learning something. And velocity banking is fantastic. However, I mean, since I'm a doer, as you guys know, I, I have to do something. I have to, I challenge myself 
and I, I and that the goes along with my goal. Like for instance, right now it's February, and I I think we're gonna acquire another property this month uh, to flip it. So I'm think I'm thinking, oh, oh my goodness, it's already February. I need to I go go through my goals, and I push myself. You know, pushing myself uh, allowed me not only to buy more properties, but also increase my network, um, give more energy to the people that, are, that I surround myself. Hey, are you going to get another property? Yes. Where are you getting it? How are you doing it? You know, so the more I say in these things, the more I teach this, it's kind of retroactive. It comes back to me as well. Mm, I like that. So if I understand you right, when when you are producing, when you are creating value in real estate and as a marketer, you are taking your <clears throat> your classes, you're consistently learning, and then as you're applying things uh, in your real estate, as you're pushing your goals, like you said, you're like, hey, I need to get a property this month, it, it kind of comes up naturally in your conversation. It starts to become part of who you are in the, this enthusiasm and excitement and sharing. And if if I understand you right... When, when you're talking with somebody else and you're doing the actions from the classes, people can see there's a difference than just talking about them. You're actually doing something with it. It's like what Bob Snyder said during that generally speaking video, act it until you become it. And you can take a class and then you start to act through those things. You're taking action on those ideas and then eventually you can become that producer. So Lily, when you're becoming a producer, how do we avoid overwhelm? Because I think it's so easy in the beginning to go through go through a class and you're like, oh, I'm so excited. I love this. Oh, wait a second. There's another class over there. Uh, before I apply this, I'm going to go do another class. And then you go through another class. And you're like, oh, I'm so excited about doing this. And then you're like, oh, I, I heard about this class. And now you, you start going from class to class to class and you're, you're missing that action portion. So how do you discipline yourself to step back and make sure that you're taking action on what you've already learned? and give yourself that just in time learning so that you actually are getting results based on what you've learned. You ask a question that I'm so guilty of because I that's one of my weaknesses, you know. I'm I'm getting excited easily with a new education, with new ideas, right? And and I get distracted so I, I ended up sometimes doing nothing. Uh, that's when I started. And even sometimes right now, I'm a, uh, like, oh, I want to buy this program and I want to do this. And my husband is the one that is, hey, 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 we have to just start something, applying it, and then we move to another uh, subject because we're going to be a master of, of going everywhere and doing nothing, right? Uh, but for me, initially, I mean, I think uh, – I, I focus on, well, since I'm a numbers person, I need to, I usually say, okay, if I want to do this, what's going what's to be my result? Yes, I found myself trying to catch several, uh, several um, strategies, but I focus on one based on my needs, my initial needs. My initial needs were massive income. I needed massive income. Yes. So I focus on activities that will create that income. Some of them were fix and flip, work at the wholesale, the most typical common ones, right? Yeah. And or a combination of uh, a seller finance and fix and flip. So I apply those initially. I study those. I work on those. I apply those. And once I got what I wanted, uh, now I move on to the second phase, which was passive income. I'm not saying I'm not going to continue doing massive activity, uh, massive income strategies because I will continue, but I now I'm working on both. So seller finance is another one that I've been using a lot or any anything um, has to do with passive income. And I last year I thought I'm going to do multi-unit. Have I done any? No, because I don't know I, what was in my mind, but I was that I had that idea. I want to do multi-unit, but I haven't. But, and one of the reasons that I, why I have not do it, done it um, and in my in my searching to work with uh increase my network, I I met with this guy that he he has multi units and he said I have two multi units, two or three, but mm -hmm. I don't have any single property, single single final single uh, family residence. And he said, I'm going to buy, and say, well, why do you want to buy single family? You have like three multi-units. You may have a lot of cash flow. Yes, I do. I do a lot of cash flow. 
But guess what I don't have? If there's an emergency, I cannot cash out easily mm. because it takes time to uh, to uh, sell these opportunities. So I have to have single opportunity, single unit that I can cash out easily. So then I went, okay, so that makes sense to me. Let me acquire more properties that I can cash easily before I get into this. So I'm glad I had this opportunity. But what I'm saying is me, by wanting to do multi-unit, allow me to find out more, ask more questions to other people as well that are, are in the business. So yeah, so, so right. and uh, basically it's uh, study one strategy, apply it, and then think about other one. But before you get immersed into that, start finding out from others as well. So then you see you're ready for that. That's my answer. I, I love that. And I think sometimes we we get caught in this, let's run to the next thing and run to the next thing. But if if we take a moment to pause after we've learned something and ask ourselves, all right, what what do I actually intend to accomplish based on what I just learned? What am I going to apply? It doesn't have to be every single thing, but it does have to be something. Otherwise, the the class that you listened to didn't actually help you went in one ear and out the other. So right. when you take action based on what you've learned, that goes from your, your head to your heart because you went and you experienced something and whether that experience is good or bad, it is still an experience and it's helping you further your, your conversation is helping you further your, your opportunity in real estate and in uh, what we do here with Renatus. So Lily, here's another thought that I, I think would be awesome. And you're, you're the perfect person to be able to, to illuminate this. When you are talking with someone that is not your same drive, right? Let's say I, I'm a director and an executive is what I feel like I, I align with most of the time. When you're talking with someone that's not your drive and you're doing your very best to understand their perspective, how have you been able to share your, your dreams and goals and the things you've been able to accomplish and help them see what's possible, help them be able to paint that picture of possibility in their own language. How have you been able to do that? It was not easy, and I'm still working on that, quite honest. Uh, um, I, I have to understand how, first of all, I need to understand the level of energy to try to mimic that. Okay, some people get like, um some people don't like my my high energy so i have to i ask questions we're talking how are you doing how's life and based on the question that i ask mm -hmm. i can see what is not only the the level of energy but what is in their mind if i say hey how's life and i still complain like yeah well yeah you know job i hate my job and, and i can see okay I, I can understand maybe it's gonna be harder for me just to to have um to see the best on this person so i have before I uh, open to my product or what I wanted to say, I have to keep digging more. And how do you, why do you feel this way, right? To the point, well, why don't you like, you don't like your job? Well, you know, a lot of hours until I find the, the, the pain. Mm -hmm. And if the pain is time or is uh, whatever is the, the, I try to, to um, the, the last thing I, I do because I put experience, I start vomiting on my dreams. I can't. Because my dreams may not be their dreams, right? Maybe what I want is what I want. And then that I cut it. N number two that I do, and I learned this to my husband as well, is listen, listen, and listen. That we will have two ears and one mouth. And me as a director, I'm a solution person. I jump to solutions. If you just tell me, if you're complaining about something, I jump to sol solve the problem. Right. But sometimes people don't want a solution. They want to be heard only. They want to be heard. And then you just come and say, uh, <clears throat> when they're telling about their, you know what, my job, I don't like, I, I hate this, or blah, blah, blah. You try to go to the, and why, why is that? What makes you feel this way? And they feel like, wow, she cares about me. And once you get to the point of understanding of this connection, then you can talk about how you feel or what you have been doing. A lot of times when we talk to people, we just wait for the other one to breathe so we can say something, right? Mm -hmm. I, I need to be, I did that, and I'm doing this and doing that, blah, 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 blah. No, because again, it's not who's done, it's not a competition of who's talking more. It's a, 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 a communication is 
listen to this person, analyze what they're saying. Once you got there, when you once they feel heard, now you can just talk about what exactly that they need. That's what I've been most of my conversations. Actually, quite honest, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I met with two people that I haven't seen forever. Friends that I that I that I appreciate a lot. And uh, one of them is, I think, is a relator. And she was talking and telling me her stuff. And I was, and quite honest, my whole conversation was listening to this person. Listen, I was tempted to talk, but I was, hmm, I'm not going to say anything. And, and she was like, really? I think you have changed. I think, I think you for this conversation was so uh, great. I was like, okay, I was so tempted to say something about my life, but I didn't say nothing. But she wanted to be heard. Um, and the other one, a similar, similar drive. But what I'm saying is I'm learning. One of the things connected to the drive is listening. Listening and then based on what you heard, you may realize if it's a, a relator, it's an executive. Executives don't talk a lot, quite honest. Uh, if it's a relator, they talk more. If it's a director, you start thinking, oh, I just want to get out of here. I want to travel. How? You start hearing about independence. When I hear about... Uh, Intellectuals, they like to learn a lot. They, they get excited about new topics of learning. And, uh, and yeah, well, that's how I've been trying to connect with some of the drives and uh, by listening. For now, I'm, listen I'm learning to listen. I think even if we don't fully understand their drive yet, that's the key to start understanding it. I mean, if we don't get that framework, we definitely need to just walk. We need to watch that class multiple times, go through it and just interact with it. I literally have it taped onto my computer right here so that I can remind myself, all right, if I get talking about lifestyle or get too proof focused, then I will alienate the community, uh, the, you know, the relators. I'll start to alienate the system, the people that want to understand the system and the validators as well. So I always am doing my best to figure out how can I reframe my questions to, to use the words that would connect with them. And if you don't listen really carefully, you can't do that. That's this active listening you're talking about. So can you talk to us a little bit more about uh, a time that you were able to actively listen and you felt like you didn't just hear what they said, but you kind of felt what they said? Uh, basically, um one other thing, and I have to I have to give credit to my husband and to this because he's a very good listener, and I think uh, and I wasn't, you know. I mean, as I, as I said, I'm a, a problem solver, um, and uh, I remember the first time I met him, he I was talking to him and he was listening to me, and I that maybe that was the connection. He was asking me questions, why you feel this way, what what would, I mean, a lot of questions that makes me, how oh, really? I mean explore my inside and stuff like that so um uh, i'm sorry i, I missed your question now okay. we got into my past <laughs> so i'll, I'll re rephrase the question so when you're having a good conversation this is something i've noticed you don't just hear what they say you feel what they say and when you start to ask questions along their uh their language along what it is that they want and understand their dreams and we start asking those deeper questions well why is it that you like that tell me a little bit more about that and we dig deeper into their dreams and their goals it's very different than if you just say oh this is my dream and here's my goal and let me tell you all that like you're saying you vomit, <laughs> you verbally vomit on them. we don't want to have diarrhea of the mouth it's it's so important that we listen all right so, and, and and that is like it's typical when they're telling you something and you're like and yeah, and now it doesn't tell you now about me. And you don't say that, but it's like, how do they know? How I know that you listen to me? Oh, I assume you listen to me, but I don't know. Maybe in your mind was something else because now you're talking about you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I, I think is when I talk to people, I try to be very, what's the palabra, how's the word? Be in their shoes, understand what they're going through and ask more, more, you know? Ask, and how, how make you feel? And what you have done that? Oh, that's good. I mean, I, I, I was, what I understand is you're doing this and this. Yeah, good. Uh, okay. So then I'm trying to get to the point of how they feel. Mm. How they feel about these decisions that you're doing, right? 
you know what? I don't, let's say they said, I, I want more time. I feel that I'm not a good mother. I feel I'm not a good provider, whatever. It is. Oh, and, and when you feel this, I mean, what is your state? So we got we're trying to be this, have this connection so I can, they can understand that, that I feel their pain through the uh, uh, series, series of questions. As I said, it's been a learning from me because learning process for me because I'm not like that. But it's great because they feel understood and I feel what they need. And when I feel how they need, it's more coming from the heart, not from the mind, your solution, right? So if you, if, if I offer you this opportunity and I know your situation, or I understand, I'm not, I mean, they will feel the sincerity of me offering a product. They wouldn't feel any um, commission uh, breath out of my talk they will feel like uh, she really cares about what my situation if she offers this opportunity to me it's because she she see that or sometimes i said you know i know your finances are terrible right now you don't have any money no credit or nothing what about if you read this book i mean I mean, let me give you my or if i have a book or do this if you want to change your life let's work together what about if you just have this motivation and let's talk in a week or in 15 days Right. It's not, it's not like, oh, well, you don't have the resources. Take, talk to you next week or next month or whatever you have the money. It's like more what I want about, I mean, what I see, the potential that I see in you. Right. That's how we change it when you just, uh, is the word empathize? Empathize with what they're saying. It's more coming from the heart than from their mind. I love that. So it's more coming from the heart than the mind. It, it sounds like when you are are not just trying to sympathize with somebody, you are are recognizing what they're feeling, what they're thinking, where they want to go with their life. And you're not trying to superimpose your own goals, your own ideas onto them. All you're doing is you recognize where there's a gap. And if there's something in that uh, in that gap that you're like, hey, I have a bridge for you. Renatus is actually where you could go from where you want to your goal. Then you can o- offer that. And it doesn't feel like you have commission breath because you're just serving them. That service yeah. mentality is huge. It's not about, hey, this is this is how I'm going to make twelve thousand dollars this month. It's it's never been about that. It's about how do we create value for them and help them get to their goals. And if this yeah. is something that we actually believe in, it's something that we're using. We feel that enthusiasm, like you talked at the very beginning, and because we're applying it, we're getting tons of value. Why wouldn't we share it? It's like you go to a, a restaurant. And you have some awesome spaghetti. You're like, this is the best spaghetti I've had in my life. It's so good. We tell other people about it. And we're un- unashamed to let them know how good that spaghetti was. Why don't we do that with Renatus more? Right? If we're really using it, we will get that enthusiasm and that excitement. We want to share it. Go ahead. And it also has to be cost, constancia, cost, co- I mean, I say, cons, uh, please, I have, I have no words to my mind. Constancia, repetition, repetition yeah. and stuff. It has to be. So, has to be uh... When I want to say this, because for instance, you we all receive mail all the time, right? And we don't even need or care about the mail, maybe throw it away. But in, sometimes you see the mail about, let's say, something that you don't need right now, but you receive it all the time, all the time. And one day you think, oh, you know, I, I think I want to buy a car. What do we call these people that have been sending me this car for the last two years? Yeah. Okay. Somehow we should apply something similar. In these days, we can use either social media, because the person that we talk about, where we express our care for them, and and you can continue calling them, but it depends how you want to apply your strategy. For me, the best is using social media to uh, to uh, express what I do for life, what I do about how I think about uh, wealth. So. One of the things that you can do is when you talk to someone, and I think maybe you already you guys know this, uh, instead of texting them, do some do it through Messenger, Facebook Messenger. The more you interact with them through Messenger, the more your profile is gonna be up. When they up open their Facebook, your profile is gonna be first or one of the top. So it's important for you to have good content in your profile in your in this case Facebook. Content about life changing opportunities. You and then you and you can you have to make you know I mean like a Robert Perry class says do something very organic, but something always positive, lift uplifting, and uh, 
Uh, and that's why I just really, let's say I haven't talked to people for a while. And how you do it, it's easier for me to see if they have read the, the text or not, or the, me the messenger, the message, excuse me. Uh, so that's what I use that and for that for that thing. So now I have two responsibilities. Have a, always a good profile uh, or a good feed in my Facebook page because I know people is looking at me, looking at me. So if I'm bringing more people to my, to expose, I bring more people have to get a good exposure, basically. So I'm going to do something right now, guys. We're going to be a little transparent. You ready? We're going to go and we can start with mine, but we're going to see what is being perceived on our Facebook pages and see if there's anything we can, we can improve. So when you see mine, this is what you see, All right? You get to see a little okay. bit about some value adding podcasts. Get, see, I'm a family man. Um, uh, this is a good friend of mine. Who's uh, raising money for a film that I helped uh, him produce. I was in it as well. And you think about what, like, showing that I'm, I'm religious as well. Cause I like to faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of that. Most recently, my, my podcast has been the thing that's been populating more. So I probably need to spice it up with some more family posts and spiritual posts and other things like that. But most of it's been business probably the last month because I've been putting such a, a hard focus. And then my friend passed away. So I went down to that, but that's mine. And we're going to look at Lily's as well. So this is so you can see what it is we're talking about. Okay. Okay. And I'm uh and one thing also I want to mention real quick is that you have to uh put it for all of the um what is it called for all of the drives. Yes. You have to be aware. So, okay. If I'm gonna do something, some relators may like to uh, read long stories. Executives maybe not. And this is one of the, my flips that I just done. I mean, went to see yesterday. This is uh talking about. I mean, this is kind of kind of actually I almost puke in this video, but it was. It's real. I'm trying to just, it's just what is what's happening there, right? Yeah. And oh, a lot of real. Posts. So here's what we saw in the last five posts. You do real estate. You have really good huh? connections with people, uh, eat, eating out. Uh, you just sold a house. More real estate there. I haven't watched that one, but <laughs> you, can tell you speak Spanish as well. There's That's something you can find out really quickly right up here. You're like, oh, uh, charity properties. That's one way we can get to know you a little bit more. Uh, studied at University of Utah. Oh, one more thing real quick uh, here right. in the in the intro. Also, you have to put in the intro. Check the intro. The, oh, the intro That's there. Important. You need to specify exactly what you're doing because a lot of people want to know who is Lily Stott or uh, who's Brigham. So then somehow identify your, your, who you are there in that area. Absolutely. Um, Can I share a strategy as well, guys? If you're like, I don't know how to do this, uh, this little portion right here. Um, we call it an audio business card. My favorite version of this is in Jay Massey's class. That is the, uh, probably about a third way through his, uh, investor ID class. He talks about I, and then you say the action verb to your target audience so that, and then benefit benefit. And then you can also add without negative pain point. That little strategy can be fit into your intro. Let's see how I did on, on mine. I haven't thought of that in a little while. I think I put my mission statement as mine, if I if I remember right. Because I recently changed. Yeah, so I positively impact, inspire, and uplift leaders to have joy and reach their God-given potential. That's what I do. Um, I will add some those... emojis. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I will add some emojis, something like it's in, the, in your intro. Mm -hmm. something like ma makes uh more uh, fun to read i i got it from not from me i got it from other people okay i they told me put some emoji something that goes aligned to what you're saying uh i am just telling you yeah so emojis you can add some emojis yeah, kind of yeah, like what yeah. Lily did here see if she's got four little emojis it makes it break break up the uh, the visual a little bit more and that's cute you, you do have to stay to i think a uh, hundred and forty characters something like that so you can't get too wordy on this. And the more succinct and clear, the better. But there you go. And this is another opportunity for people is you can you can section off some of your best content and save it into these uh, these featured posts. So anyway, there's some Facebook uh, skills that you guys can develop a little bit more.
But you think about it, if if we don't have a good business card on Facebook, people will come and be like, she hasn't posted in three years. What the heck? I don't know. I don't know if that's actually a real person. But if you're posting every week minimum, then then they'll start to see, oh, this is a real person. They actually care. They they are a producer. They're getting out in real estate. Even if you are not, check this out, guys. Even if you are not currently in a deal, highlighting and letting other people know, oh my gosh, I was just on a call with Lily. She barely sold a house. Congratulations, Lily. Made however much she said she made on that. Results aren't typical, but man, I'm so grateful that she found this community. You can elevate other people's stories and get excited about that. And then you can talk about how you're applying the education in different ways, how other people are applying the education. And there's something called a um, a curiosity post. Have you guys heard of these before? I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Lily, I know you do this really well. You often will talk about curiosity posts. It's giving a portion of the story, but not all of it. Will you talk to us about uh, how you create curiosity on your Facebook post? Uh, yeah, well, uh, one thing I learned from uh, um, uh, Coach Breyer mm -hmm. is like, it depends, again, this is, he's talking in, in general things, but if you have a lot, uh, you, ha you have to have something in seven seconds. And so then uh, something that you your audience is going to want to see more, right? Something like they're going to, oh, what is it? And then once you cut their attention, you can continue with your post or, or more. So the posts are, I mean, um, um, I'm trying to use more for uh, teaching, learning. I use reels, but the reels are also part of the post. But I, yeah, I use something like um, something like they cut their attention, like uh, uh, let's say I let's say I've done a seven figure income, and like, well, what is that? And then I explain, I explain later. No, what will happen? Or I can say, um, I can say, oh, if, uh, guess where I'm going if I'm traveling, right? And where are you going now? Stuff like that. So most of the posts. So what? Well, okay, let me just say this again. When you're posting, and I'm not, I'm not a guru into this. I'm learning as well with my husband. Is what you want is interaction. You know, the more interaction, the more uh, uh, in your um, interact with other. Facebook's gonna put you in a, in a higher platform, in a higher exposure to others. So when you put something, what you want is people to ask questions, right? And where where are you going? And you can re you have to respond, and re all the time respond to your to the if you're posting something, respond to your uh, inquiries or not inquiries. I mean, whatever they post, you respond. Uh, but I usually uh, create give something, give the result, not the process. I always put this is what I'm saying. I'm not giving everything. Create a curiosity. I paid, I paid my house. Oh no, I, this, is, this is a good one. In four months, I lowered my balance, my mortgage, my mortgage time four years or six years. What why have you done that? What is it? Right. And sometimes I put the or sometimes I say, Oh my goodness, I screenshot my mortgage payment. I can't believe I'm paying so much in in interest. Can can you relate to this? And people like, oh yeah, I'm paying a lot. So what I'm doing with that post is interaction. I want people to comment, right? And they start saying, yeah, I pay a lot. Bank stock, whatever they want to say, blah 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 blah. And I just try to uh, co uh, respond to them, so I create an interaction. And on that, every every people that complain, I send a text saying, hey, I have a way that you can change your the way you see the finance. So that's one way. Another way is when I go to other social media groups, which is kind of tough on that one because you have to follow up. Um, you go to other social media groups and start follow. I mean, texting and answering other people's questions in, in other in other groups. And I feel the same way. But again, when you go to other groups that are not yours, and people are asked, let's say a lot of real estate groups, be a, a help. Don't sell nothing yet. And you don't sell directly. You just try to connect with them. Oh, I feel the same way. You know, banks, sometimes you pay a lot of interest. You know, I understand. Or whatever they are saying. And one thing that I have not been doing, I want to save you a lot of time. I've been commenting a lot of people, oh, waiting for, the, for them to respond. And I forgot who am I texting to. Gosh. Uh, so now, every time I talk to anyone, I write the, the, the person names. 
so I can follow up later. And uh, some of them respond, others don't. And out of those, I got through real good connection. People that I've been learning from and they are learning from me as well. I love that. Well, we are right at the time to uh, to wrap this up, but I think we are starting to understand how to crack this producer's code. And it comes down to not just what you know, it's about who you know, and it's about how you take action. Imperfect action is always better than no action. And if we prepare to do the thing and we think about doing the thing and we are getting ready to do the thing, we're not actually doing the thing. <laughs> so we need to take the action and do the thing. Like what Lily said early on in this, it, it sounds like Lily, you have, have not only a wealth of experience, but you've had a wealth of action that you've taken in this business. And I, I appreciate you being on this call and taking energy to, uh, to, to take some of those insights that you've had and bring them forth, not leave them in your head, but let us have an opportunity to share with you. Is there any final thoughts that you have before uh, we sign off? Oh, just uh, continue um, building um, good thoughts in your mind because that's the key. And always, uh, every day, every, like, like, like your breakfast, every day take something positive to you. Say like, uh, what do you say? Make, fake it. No, it's not fake until you make it, but it's say something that you think you are not until you are. Say it to you, say it to you. And uh, it, uh, positive vibes, good network, people um, always try to find someone that will inspire you, you know, every day, or a book, a person, um, and reject negative people that put up a, a mirror to all of them. <laughs> just that. I love that visual. It's so good. Put up a mirror to the negative people. Like, you just have that back at you. <laughs> So good. Well, thank you so much, Lily. Guys, I hope you got as much value out of this call as I did. I really appreciate it. I'll be putting this on my Facebook page probably within the next three or four hours. Uh, if you have anyone that you're like, man, this would be super beneficial to have somebody else in the community know about it or other people, let me know uh, by just going and, and following, hitting that notification button on there. But always, it is a pleasure to have have time with you every single Friday, Lily. I look forward to it all the time. So you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> have a great day. See you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. There we go. Farewell. Oh, before I actually sign off, I wanted to make sure that everyone got the phone numbers. Specifically, I wanted to make sure that um, uh, our newest member got all those phone numbers. So where did she go? All right, Jayla. I don't know if she's still here. Jayla, were you able yes. to get all the phone numbers? Yes, I um took a screenshot. Excellent. Okay. Text everybody your phone number and your or I guess you'll you'll get the phone number. Uh, text everyone your your email and your your photo, and then they can save that into their phone and we can start to build this relationship. Because if you don't have the contact information, it's very hard to build a relationship. And you're never yes. gonna deal with someone if they don't know your phone number and your email. <laughs> so Think about that. The more people in the community that know your phone number and your email and your face, the higher probability you have to do a real estate transaction. So that's like networking 101. If we don't have uh, someone's phone number and we don't have their contact information, we don't have their picture in our phone, that might be the next thing you need to do. Go through your phone and be like, wow, I've known this person for a long time. I don't have the picture of them. Say, oh my gosh, I don't know how... I, I missed this, but I never got a picture of you. And I don't want to just steal it off Facebook. Will you send me a, a picture that you really like? And here's one of me. You just made another step closer to potentially doing a real estate deal with that person. Does that make sense? This yes. Networking 101. So important. Uh, next thing that I, I would say, if, if you are not sure of who the people are in your contacts, I've been doing this pretty recently where I will text them. I'm sharing them uh, basically my funnel. Right now I'm using my my podcast as a way to let people get to know me, like me and trust me uh, on that podcast. Eventually I'll, I'll say, Hey, here's where you can go and get my free audio uh, ebook that I wrote. And that will, will be able to turn them from, you know, someone that's just consuming my content to someone that we could potentially have a business relationship. They might stay in one of my short-term rentals and they might want me to property manage uh, their short-term rentals for them or coach them on, uh, you know, on real estate by, bringing them into the community. I wouldn't be their coach, but the, connecting them to the resources. That is the beginning is having them know who you are. 
after they know you, they have to like you, which is, you know, going through your content and then they have to trust you, which is you do what you say you're going to do consistently. So that's how I'm doing it is with this podcast. But what's cool is you guys can do that with your Facebook lives. Just do something with those Facebook lives. What if after you did a Facebook live with someone, say you're like every single week, I'm going to do a five minute Facebook live. I'm going to save that, put it on uh, into an MP3. I'll, I'll save that. And then I'll make that my podcast. What if you did that? And then when you have a brand new person, they have some resources and they can get to know you for a while. It's, it's just a matter of capturing what you're already doing. And I wish I would have had this insight four years ago because I've created probably hundreds of hours, no, no joke, hundreds of hours of content that if you weren't there live, it just kind of went into the ether and became nothing. And I've had some really good content that I've produced. So I was like, I'm no longer letting that happen. I'm going to take what we do here on these calls and other calls that I, I, I do. I'm going to repurpose it and repackage it so that we can have value years to come. This is the, the difference between having something that you just do and having something that you document. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I really appreciate your time. And uh, we don't have any other questions. I just thank you for the engagement. Nick, you had some really great comments. I didn't get to edify you, but thank you so much. And uh, Wilmer, did you get all the phone numbers that you needed? I know. Uh, looks like you asked a question. I did not see that in time, but appreciate you guys. I'm going to sign off now, but you know how to find me, 435-238-0707. Uh, that's my my phone number. And doing this uh, this thing called Renatus. Guys, we got to get to Nationals. It's going to be awesome. Nationals is the 21st through the 23rd. I hope all of you have your tickets. If you don't have your tickets, take time today to do it. It's, I think, about a week left of uh, of doing what we need to do to, or I guess a week left of the... What am, I, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm back up. We have early bird pricing for like another week. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, have a great day, guys. God bless. I appreciate you. And thanks again, Jayla, for sharing your, your story. Thank you're you. You're, you're so welcome. Have a great day, guys. God bless. All right.